making breakfast today, breakfast potatoes and scrambled eggs. So Kyle is here with me. She's going to be helping me out. She's working on her knife skills, her chopping skills, and she has come a long way. Oh, yeah. Getting a lot faster, getting a lot better. Look at those potatoes. And so potatoes are a great source of potassium as well as um, some fiber, especially if you eat the skin. And so we're making our breakfast potatoes homemade. Um, first of all, because if you buy um, like the hash brown bags at the grocery store, um, when I did a price comparison, those are running from anywhere from like uh, like two ten above two dollars um, versus a five pound bag of potatoes. Um, that's just a little over a one dollar. So we're not even using all the potatoes in the five pound bag, so we can definitely make this meal again and again versus buying the more expensive frozen hash browns. You typically will use that once, that bag once, and then you're done feeding your family. So you get more bang for your buck if you make your potatoes homemade from home. Plus sometimes those frozen um, varieties, they add a little more sodium or salt um, to keep it preserved. Or if they add like sauces, like cheese or different things, that's going to just add more, more fat and um, more sodium to those potatoes. So when we make it from home, we get to control how much salt goes on them, um, what seasoning, how much fat goes in it. So look at the size of some of these. Yeah. You want to try and cut it to that size, okay? Um, just because if we cut them smaller, they'll cook faster. And that is a great benefit because I know I love to cook, but I don't want to be in the kitchen for a super long time. So if we cut them smaller, they cook faster, they less time in the kitchen. So look at this one. Try and do about that. Just, we might have to cut some of those in half. While you're doing that, I'm just going to start cracking eggs into the bowl over here. And we're going to do six eggs. We're just going to crack them all into the bowl. Mix them up. So. Eggs are nutritious and they are a cheap source of protein. Um, however, uh, eggs have gotten a lot of flack over the previous years. Um, you know, people are afraid of the cholesterol levels in eggs. Um, however, we do more uh, research every year on different topics, and we have found over the years that. Um, eating eggs, at least eating one egg per day, is not going to put you at a higher risk for heart disease or stroke or um, having high cholesterol. Um, the cholesterol in the egg is in the yolk. So I was just going to demonstrate if you are worried about cholesterol and you still don't want to eat um, the whole egg, you can just eat the egg white. So you just crack it. And then you kind of just um, scoop it back and forth. Um, so you're getting the egg white, but not the egg yolk. We're going to eat our yolks today, but if you're worried about cholesterol, you can definitely just skip that part and just eat the egg white. And eggs are also um, a great source of other nutrients other than cholesterol. So we, even though cholesterol kind of has a bad rep because um, it eating too, or not eating too much, but having high cholesterol in our blood, which is caused by eating too much saturated fat. So I've talked about in some of that in, uh, in other videos, saturated fat is um, the fat that is largely found in animal products. So like butter, um, beef fat, bacon, um, that fat is associated with high cholesterol levels and higher heart disease rates. Um, cholesterol is eating cholesterol is not necessarily going to raise your cholesterol levels in your blood. Um, but we do need to eat some cholesterol um, because it helps us form vitamin D, um, which is definitely a good thing, as well as our hormones in our bodies. Our hormones, we need hormones uh, to regulate the, our body, and hormones need cholesterol to be formed. So we definitely need to eat some cholesterol. It's not totally bad. Um, also, eggs are a great source of different vitamins and minerals. One is lutein. Or gluten. Um, this mineral 
is associated with eye health. So eating enough gluten can uh, reduce your risk of cataracts, or if you already have cataracts, it can make your vision a little bit better. Um, it also helps prevent age-related macular degeneration, so just an eye, an eye disease. Uh, both Kyla, we, both of us are fully vaccinated. I'm gonna take off my mask. Okay. Eggs also have a nutrient called choline, and choline um, is is good for our brains and our nervous system, our spine. Um, eating enough choline, making sure you get enough choline in your diet, is associated with better memory, um, with better mood. Um, so choline is also found in eggs, another great benefit. And um, going back to the cholesterol. If you are worried about having too high of a cholesterol, um, eat more fiber. So we talked about potatoes having fiber. Um, fruits and vegetables are also great sources of fiber as well as um, whole grains like whole wheat toast, um, popcorn, corn, uh, quinoa. Those are all whole grain sources. Wild rice, brown rice. And so um, when I was looking at some of the research around eggs, um, what they, what the scientists were saying were that um, they think the bad rep that eggs got from previous studies, at least related to heart disease, um, is because most of the time people eat eggs with sausage and bacon and like white toast and those super fried um, potatoes. So they're eating a lot of um, high saturated fat foods with eggs. And so that's why they think, you know, in that typical sort of breakfast um, that um, they got those associations with eggs being unhealthy, but eggs are super healthy. Yeah. And I should also say, you can definitely make this recipe we're making today um, if you get the powdered um, or dried egg mix with your commodity food package. Um, so we're using six eggs today, so you would do about one and a half cups of that um, dried egg mix um, to get about the same uh, quantity of eggs. And dried egg mix has the same, um, uh, about the same amount of cholesterol as um, fresh eggs. So they're very similar. Um, we're going to add a little bit of Greek yogurt and some seasoning to our eggs. Um, if you want, you can definitely um, use milk um, instead of Greek yogurt. Um, with your eggs, it's just kind of up to your preference. I like Greek yogurt because it has um, pretty decent like protein content. Um, it's lower in lactose as well. And it's, it's a thicker, creamier yogurt than, um, than just regular old yogurt. So it, it gives the scrambled eggs a nice uh, creamy texture. So I'm going to probably do about half a cup of this Greek yogurt. Do a little salt and pepper, a little garlic powder, a little onion powder. I'm just going to put a little bit of hot sauce. So this is optional. Um, the only thing you might want to consider whether or not to add hot sauce is the sodium or like salt level in it. Um, so hot sauce isn't too, too high in sodium, but there is some. So you're definitely adding some to your meal when you add hot sauce. Also, part of the reason that Kiowa and I, and I are um, doing this meal today is because March is National Nutrition Month. Um, so we really want to focus on eating healthy this month, making some healthy behavior changes. And this year's theme for National Nutrition Month is personalize your plate. So I'm trying to do super um, versatile and flexible recipes this month that you can easily just change out the ingredients, personalize it to your own taste. And I think scrambled eggs is a great way to do that. Um, you can add so many different veggies um, to your scrambled eggs. Also, it's a great way to use up any produce or fruits and vegetables you have that might be going bad. Um, so if you have some like fresh spinach that's starting to go bad or uh, tomatoes or peppers that are starting to look a little wrinkly, um, scrambled eggs are a great way to use up those produce. Um, just chop them up, cook them in, in the pan with the eggs, um, and you're getting lots of nutrients that way. Um, so in our scrambled eggs today, we're going to be adding um, the tomatoes, the bell pepper, the onion, and the spinach. Um, however, um, other things you can
try um, our carrots. If your carrots are going bad, definitely add them in. Celery, mushrooms, um, and then broccoli and cauliflower. Those are also things you could potentially add to your eggs as well. Um, you could also do canned produce. So you could do like canned tomatoes, um, canned spinach, um, you know, whatever, whatever you want to add. Um, just when you're going for canned options, try and go from the lower sodium options, um, such as the, the ones that are labeled low sodium or um, the ones that are labeled no salt added. Those are good options. Your water. Yeah. It's important to stay hydrated also. Mm -hmm. Cooking can definitely be a physical activity, right? Like we're chopping, we're whisking, we're moving around, we're standing on our feet. Um, so it's a great way to keep you physically active while also making yourself a nutritious meal. Definitely stay hydrated. I was drinking water today. Water is the best thing to drink. So you do an awesome. I am just going to add a little bit of seasoning to our potatoes while Kyle continues to chop the rest. She's almost done. Almost. Almost. One more. Um, so I'm just going to do garlic powder, onion powder, salt, and black pepper. And we've made these potatoes before, haven't we, Kyle? Yeah. So we made these potatoes. Um, we were trying to do like a healthy version of... Is this the word? That was perfect. Of a uh, tater tot casserole. And so instead of putting tater tots on the top... We just bake the potatoes like we're doing right now, cooked them in the oven at 400 for about 20 to 30 minutes. And then instead of putting tater tots on top of the tater tot casserole, we put these potatoes on top and they're super delicious. We forgot to add the cheese to our eggs, so I'm going to put a little bit of cheese in here too. So these potatoes, I, I think they also um, are really great to meal prep as well because um, they stay they stay, like their quality is uh, pretty good. Even if you just keep them in the refrigerator over the week and just heat them up in the microwave um, when you're ready to eat some, um, they, they still t stay pretty crispy and they taste good. So these are definitely um, something you can meal prep and then um, breakfast. I already washed all the produce. That is a great comment. I love it. Food safety, yes. Yeah, so I washed all of our produce off, even the potatoes. So we're gonna dice it. So good. Yep. Slice it. Whoa! <laughs> it's a it squares. <laughs> yep. So just dice it in about the, the same size as these potatoes. Okay. This size. Try to do your best. Okay. So I'm gonna go ahead and stick these potatoes in the oven. Okay. And so I'm gonna start this pan already. Get it heating up. Um, and then we're just going to add the tomato, the onion, and the bell pepper. Um, that we're going to let that cook for a little bit. Let some of the liquid from the tomato um, evaporate and like, steam off. Yeah. Let the onions cook so that they're not crunchy. Um, we want them to be translucent and soft. So I'm just adding some onion to the pan. Fruits and vegetables are one of the most nutritious foods we can eat. I'm sure everyone has heard that or knows that. Um, but they have a lot of vitamins and minerals. Hey, that was, I think that's Byron's drink. Um, they also have lots of fiber. Most people don't get enough fiber. And fiber is really important because it helps our digestive tract, our intestines, our stomach stay healthy. Um, more and more young people are starting to get colon cancer. And one of the best ways to prevent your risk of developing colon cancer is to eat enough fiber. Um, also, fiber helps us stay full for longer. So we eat a meal with plenty of fiber, um, we're, we're going to be satisfied and we're not going to be hungry um, for at least a few hours. So that's another great benefit of fiber. Also, if you're a diabetic, Eating fiber yeah, with your meals will help make sure your yeah, blood sugar um, only moderately creeps up. It doesn't. It, it will make sure so that it doesn't spike and then uh, come back down quickly. So it keeps your blood sugar at a moderate level. So our tomatoes here, they're going to be um, a great source of vitamin C. Vitamin C helps keep our um, gums healthy, our teeth healthy. 
Um, it also helps heal wounds. So if you get a cut, if you fall and you get a scratch, um, then um, vitamin C is going to help heal that wound. You're almost done. Oh, 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 oh. Yep, and you don't have to chop the spinach because it's we're using frozen spinach, so it's already chopped up. Yep. I know, right? Easy peasy. So frozen fruits and vegetables are also a great um a great resource to use, you know. Um they they allow you to eat produce um in the winter time, maybe when some things aren't in season. Um they can also be cheaper than fresh produce. So definitely take advantage of the frozen produce. Um, just you want to just try and avoid the ones that have that added seasoning or added sauces, because that the cheese sauces or sauces they add to fro frozen produce. Yeah, now she's doing the bell pepper. Um, those sauces that they add will add more fat and more salt and sodium um, to your meal. Do a little bit of black pepper. So we just have this on about medium heat, so it's bubbling a little bit, but it's not at a full boil. Just get those seeds out. So bell peppers are a pepper that's not super spicy. I think most people have tried them. They know that they're more of a sweet pepper. Um, however, other peppers like jalapenos or serranos or habaneros, the spicier peppers, um, if you're not a fan of spice, um, just make sure you remove all the seeds before you add them to your dish or you cook with them because the seeds of the pepper are um, where that um, capsaicin is, the, the, the chemical in peppers that make them spicy. So if you remove the seeds, it'll reduce the heat. Because once we get these bell peppers in here, we're just going to let them cook for a little bit. We'll add the spinach in, let the spinach heat up because it's frozen spinach. Um, and then we'll just add the eggs, our egg mixture that I already whisked together. It's just the eggs, um, six eggs, uh, about a half a cup of Greek yogurt um, for that creaminess. Like I said before, you could definitely do milk um, instead of yogurt if you want. Um, and then um, some garlic powder, onion powder, black pepper, salt, and then a little bit of cheese, some cheddar cheese. So Greek yogurt and cheddar cheese are a couple of dairy products that are have lower lactose levels. So um, if you have lactose intolerance or dairy kind of makes your stomach upset, give them a try. Um, they have less lactose um, than milk, so it's a good option. Plus you'll get um, calcium and vitamin D. So those are great nutrients for our bones, for to have good bone health strong bones. And so the bell pepper that Kai was cutting up also will have um, plenty of vitamin C in it, like the tomatoes, which I talked about for gum health, for wound healing. Um, they also have potassium. Potassium is one of those electrolytes that helps our muscles and our body function. Did you get your finger? Almost. Almost. That was a close call. That's good you didn't get it. We're not, we're not putting any fingers in our eggs today. Um, but uh, potassium, so uh, bell pepper has potassium, which is a great nutrient for lowering blood pressure. So fruits and vegetables are some of the best sources of potassium, and like I said, it lowers, it lowers your blood, blood pressure, so that's a great health benefit. Our onions are looking translucent, that's good. Uh, the tomatoes, their liquid is starting to cook off. Because um, we don't want it too liquidy, so that's why we put them in first. You're almost there, Kyla. <laughs> you did so much chopping today. It's good practice, though. Yeah, it is practice. Yep. The most one of the most fundamental cooking skills is our knife skills. All right. Okay, let's put that spinach in here, and then you get to take a little break. And our potatoes will be done in about five minutes. So we got some tomatoes, some bell peppers, some onions, some spinach in here. Our, our dish is starting to look really colorful, which is great. The more colorful your food is, the better. 
um, because that just indicates you're getting a lot of different nutrients, a lot of different vitamins and minerals. Um, so you want to try and have a colorful plate or to try to eat, eat the rainbow. Not Skittles, fruits and vegetables. <laughs> and so pretty much all the liquid has been cooked off now, just a little bit, but it's not really liquidy, liquidy anymore. Give this eggs a nice scramble, and then we'll just add them straight in there. Oh, what you did your walk? I did my walk yesterday. Yes. Ka Kai was doing walking the res. Yeah. And how many steps did you get yesterday, Kyla? Uh, uh, <laughs> What'd you say? It was over 5,000. Yeah, 5,000. Yeah, so Kyla, Kyla might be the one to beat. She's been walking every day, mm -hmm. uh, meeting with the personal trainer. Yeah. She's going to win some prizes. She's going to be the one to beat. And what are we doing on Tuesday, Kyla? What are we going to do? We're having pizza. <laughs> <laughs> pizza. Yeah, we're going to do pizza. Yeah, turn that up and up. I'm probably doing it then. Yes. Yay! Yep, we're doing fun. Watch it tomorrow, Tuesday. Tuesday at 11. Yeah. Um, we're doing homemade pizza. I tried out the recipe last night and it was delicious. <laughs> so if you guys want a copy of any of the recipes that I cook or that Kiowa and I cook together, um, That's in the video. yeah, reach out to us. We'll give you the recipe. Mm, that was good. Look at those potatoes. <laughs> You're on camera. I don't know. <laughs> Bye. Bye. Thank you for tuning in. See you on Tuesday.